Hi, this is Lynn Hunter, L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R. I'm back with uh, Painting Our Dragon. Um, we just got done finished drawing this piece um, in my last video, and what I want to do is show you how to paint it now. Um, we use D letter number four ink with a Croquil number 102 nib. And now what I'm going to do is, this is a regular, um, I'm pa pa putting it down, and as you can see, it's, it's your standard piece of... Uh, um, corrugated cardboard and I'm taking this this, is, this uh, dragon has been drawn on a uh, 300 gram or 150 pound piece of watercolor paper and what I'm doing is this is just your standard you know here here it is scotch magic tape and I basically pay, tape my um, drawing down to the cardboard with the Scotch Magic Tape. Um, what I like to use is for a smaller painting like this, cardboard is fine. Um, it, or even um, a piece of wood will work, a uh, piece of plywood, or um, your drawing board, or a piece of glass. A piece of glass works well, or plexiglass will work well as work as well. Anything that is a, a stiff substrate that you can tape your drawing to that won't bend and this is a small enough painting where corrugated cardboard is fine. If I'm doing something bigger what I might use is um, um, a piece of um, canvas board because it's made out of chipboard and then it'll have canvas on it for acrylic painting and that's actually it keeps it nice and stiff. I do that when I'm doing acrylic paintings and I want to keep them small and transportable. I will tape them to the back side of a canvas board just because it's easy for transport and I can put it away at night and that sort of thing. So like if I'm going to take more than uh, a day to do it and I don't want to leave it out on my drawing table then I can just you know put it away in a portfolio or something after the fact before I take it off. But as you can see this is just standard Scotch Magic Tape. And I like it because it's waterproof um, and it uh, peels up very easily. It ma it's like masking tape when it peels up. If you very carefully peel it up, you don't have to worry about it tearing your paper. And it has it sticks down nicer. And if for some reason you're taking your paint and you're going across, it won't bleed under the tape. Whereas occasionally if you're using masking tape, um, I don't care what watercolor has got more water in it than most paints, so the water will bleed underneath. Whereas if you're using Scotch Pat Magic Tape, the water is not as likely to bleed under. Okay, now on this particular piece, I'm going to do a technique that I like to do for um, shading underneath. I am a very big fan of burnt sienna. Um, I like to take burnt sienna and I will tint my drawings underneath with burnt sienna to um, set up my shadows and give volume. It'll give volume and depth and it's the first thing I like to put and it's not on every painting but on the, this particular painting and a lot of my paintings I like to use burnt sienna as my undercolor um, sometimes I'll use raw umber. Um, I like to use some kind of earth tone um, as an underpainting to indicate um, shadow and turn the form first. Because wa with watercolor you're always thinking about um, the next color that's going on top because your colors will mix together to form new colors. and. The thing is, is you can use by using just a few colors, you can get thousands of colors, and that's one of the things I love about watercolors that you don't have to think too much about the colors that you're going to get next or how you're going to get a lot of value or color because um, the watercolor paints the additional colors by blending the colors together in ways that you didn't necessarily intend but that just come out nicely and when you have painted in watercolor for a while and you get used to um, getting a feel for what colors work well blending together 
um, you'll have your own favorite palette. Everybody's got their, their, their favorite palette of colors that they like to use and their favorite colors they like to buy. And that's part of your style, too, is if, you, if you're a watercolor painter, or if you're any painter, actually, they're, they're, everybody's got their own palette that they keep like falling back on. And sometimes you switch it up, and and sometimes you make different choices. But um, I'm I'm I do like this particular technique, just because um, it gives a very rich quality, and some interesting and unusual colors pop up in ways that you don't expect by um, using uh, burnt sienna as your undertone, and. So that's what we're doing on this particular painting. I, I, I have find them in my, in my dragon paintings, and I'm, I've been doing a lot of these. I do um, little sketches of dragons very often. I did a, an entire calendar of dragons, um, my uh, um, Christmas card every year is um, a child from a different culture in their native costume, or in a native costume of some kind, playing um, a musical instrument from um, the land they're from and um, enchanting a dragon. That's been my um, my uh, go-to design for Christmas cards or holiday cards for <laughs> about 20 years now. Um, I've been I've been doing Christmas cards Lord for a long long time. I, I, it's one of these things especially nowadays printing is so cheap. Um, it gets it's an expensive way to give gifts every year, but I figure um, with my friends, everybody deserves a, a you know a nice piece of of junk mail once a year. That uh, technically they're limited editions because I, I run a, I usually print up about a thousand and I send them out to friends. If you are one of my patrons, um, my my patron uh, site the minimum is uh, uh, twelve dollars a year. Everybody gets one of my Christmas cards. Um, I do something special for my patrons every year, and uh, I give out um, digital downloads. I usually give out at least um, four or five digital downloads a month of a variety of things. Um, the, if you, I give the tutorials come out first to my patrons. I have a comic book that I do once a week. I do one comic book page a week, and um, all my patrons get it a week ahead of time. So if you're you're you care to support me and and keep me going, I would really appreciate you joining my Patreon because I, I I consider it my club of friends. Um, you, you know it's it's like it's literally modern patrons and it's it's very fun. Okay, so we've got the base color down for the dragon. Now I'm going to paint the sky. Um, it's going to be a blue sky. Gee whiz, tough choice there. Um, but how I paint it, I think I'm going to do, okay, this is going to be um, Prussian blue, my, one of my go-to blues. It, it, Prussian blue is a nice turquoise blue, and I will, I'm going to change brushes. This is a zero. This is a zero Winsor Newton Series 7. I live with, um, Winsor Newton is always my favorite brushes. Um, I would highly recommend this is going to be, um, this is actually a Lowell Carnell, just because it happened to be available. And I'm going to use that for painting the sky, just because I need a bigger brush. There we go. Now I heavied that up, I dropped a little bit too much water, or too much uh, paint in there, so I'm just, I'm, dro I'm dropping just clear water on top of where I dropped the paint to, um, get it a little bit thinner because it went down a little bit thicker than I wanted it to or a little bit too heavy and Prussian blue has got more dye in it than pigment so if you if you're using cobalt or ultramarine both of those those colors will have more pigment in them so if you want um, that grainy texture um, and foxing that you get with um, um, a little bit more um, pigment in your brush. I've got a few little crumbs of the eraser from my... Now, I let a little bit of too much paint there, and just adding a little bit of water. 
Now, the thing is, is that with watercolor, um, I never count on a perfectly, um, how shall I say, um, solid color. I'm always expecting that I'm going to have puddles of dark and light. And I will do s several things to adjust that because sometimes your watercolor will pull in ways you don't want it to pull and it'll leave a big blob of color in an area that you didn't want a big blob of color in. And so um, I'll show you what to do with that if I, I end up with one of those on this. But right now what I'm doing is I'm taking areas. What you want to do is look for areas and you want to pull those particular areas and keep them moving. Because when the watercolor dries, you'll get a hard edge. And in order to keep from getting a hard edge around here, what I'll do is you keep the watercolor moving so that that edge is never quite dry. It always stays a little wet. So even though I'm working over here, I'm keeping an eye on that little place over there. And the best way, if you want to keep areas like a uniform color, is make sure you break them up with a lot of other areas. So it's like if you have a really large area that you're going to paint one color, um, it's like hold your breath because you want to keep that edge going. You want to keep this water edge going to keep it from um, getting a solid line where the paint will dry. Now you see I, I got a little bit too much paint like right there so I'm easing in a little extra water and I'm going to scumble that there's pigment in there and in order to keep it more even I'm scumbling it around within the water so that that the pigment doesn't all lay in one place and like here I didn't get enough pigment in there so I need to get a little bit more pigment in there and up here and because that area is still wet, that, that pigment will, will blend into those wet areas. And this is all stuff that, you know, it's like, okay, how do you know all this stuff? And it's not things that you have to, you know, I'm telling you this stuff and you don't have to memorize it. It's stuff you'll learn while you're painting. While you're painting, you'll go, oh yeah, Lynn said something like that. Now I remember, um, just try to not worry about making the mistakes and when you're doing pieces um, the, t the toughest thing that you can possibly do or the, the thing that you need to do more than anything else is learn not to make any piece that you do precious um, realize that there is going to be you're going to make mistakes and the most important thing for any watercolor artist to learn is how to fix your mistakes um, and you know, it, I don't make as many as I used to. I still make a lot of them, but not as many as I used to just because I've kind of figured out how to fix them either that or it's as you do more and more watercolor paintings, you just, you know, let's face it, practice does help make perfect. Um, so it's like, you know, if I'm making it look easy that's because I've done a lot of these, I mean, I've been painting for. Oh, geez, I don't even want to think about how many years I've been painting. Um, but I don't paint every day. Um, I try to paint as often as I possibly can just because I love it. I mean, the, the, the best thing that you can possibly do, um, as far as I'm concerned, is to make the thing you love to do your job. Um, there are a lot of people who say, you know, want to kill the thing that you love, make it your job. Um, and that's possibly part of it too, but um, I just, I, I've always loved drawing and painting and I've been very fortunate enough to be able to be, I've always had work that um, basically entailed drawing and painting and designing and creating. So I've been, it's a combination of being very fortunate. <laughs> All art is luck. I don't care what anybody says. Being able to do um, art for a living is a combination of luck and hard work. And you can't be able to get to do it without both. Um, I think that you can't 
You've got to have the luck, but you also have to have the heart work. You can't have one without the other. But anyways, so you can tell I'm slowly getting getting the uh, all the the blue put in, and you can tell I'm really scumbling each area to give more of a uniform blue. Um, what I like to do too is like after I lay, lay this in. I'm going to go back and I'm going to add some detail to the sky. We've got, you know, there it's not totally uniform. You can see I've got puddles where the pigment has built up like here and here and here and it's lighter here. Um, it's foxing right there. Okay, I'm going to let that sit for a bit. I'm going to go back into the dragon and we're going to come back and do some detail in the sky a little later. But right now I'm going to go into his wings a little bit. And let's see here, what color do I want to do with those wings? Hmm, decisions, decisions. I think we're going to make him purple and green. Now purple is a really tough color to play with because it's real easy to get real dark real fast. Because um, purple is almost when you're thinking in your values and watercolor, it's almost like using black. So you want to be very, very light with your purple. Um, this is literally violet. And I'm going to throw, I think, just a hint of alizarin crimson in there. Alizarin crimson is my go-to blue-red. Whenever you, my watercolor, there, that's really nice. Um, whenever you set up watercolors, or when I set up my watercolor palette, you have your color wheel of six colors. Um, your primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. Your secondary colors are green, orange, and violet. Now, what you want to have, especially in your primaries, is you have usually a warm and cool, pri warm and cool yellow, a warm and cool red, and a warm and cool blue. Um, I have usually, um, I use a cad yellow because I, I really don't like lemon yellows. I don't like the blue yellows. I, my, my yellows tend to lean everything that I, when I do warms, I do very warm warms. There. Oh, that's looking nice. That's, uh, and here's the alizarin. That's good. At what's getting that really nice, um, almost burgundy color in the wingtips and I'm putting just a little bit of violet lightly violet more of a so this more of the blue is up at the top here okay. so I'm, I'm giving so right there you see I put way too much purple down that's way too much purple that's so why I said I was warning about, you know, when you're wor working with a violet. I'm sorry. It is violet. I just like to use the word purple. Grew up with, you know, grapes. Eh, cat hair. By the way, I have a cat. If you have a cat, you will get ha cat hair in your paintings. It's unavoidable. You just pick them out. It works. Trust me. They're annoying. But let me put it this way. I don't want to get rid of the cat. Love the cat. Don't want to get rid of the cat. I put up with cat hair. So like I said, you got to be really careful with the purple because it gets dark really fast. Okay. There we go. Now, I'm going to let that dry up there. What going to do with him? I think I'm going to paint the grass because I want to get, I want to do something with his underbelly. And the grass, I'm going to go... I'm using, um, this is uh, a permanent green with a little bit of that violet mixed in with it to, to um, gray it out a bit. And a little bit, let me throw, it's a little bit too, I need some yellow in there. Yeah. This is permanent green light. And I'm throwing just a little bit of CAD over the top to give it, you know, to 
crimson to um, chartreuse it up. That's a little bit heavy, so I'm going to blot it. There we go. And throw a little more yellow in there. There we go. So, that's the thing. If you find that you've gotten too heavy in an area, don't be afraid to go in with a paper towel, pull it away. Because you can always go back in. It's, it's, if you let, you know, you just looked, I, I went dark and then I went light and then I went dark again and going, yeah. Try, trying to figure out where, what colors you want where sometimes is a little bit difficult. Okay, and I'm going to give let them sit on a gray rock. There's some gray in here. pull a little green down into that rock because you know there's moss growing on or what have you and also it'll it'll bring more balance up and down there we go. Okay. and then the sky is going to be give them a little bit of a purple undertone so we got some shadow. Now, I was talking about the sky. Now that now that it's dry, you can tell the, the blue in there is dry. I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of um, blue and give some texture to the sky. in with the uh, little bit of paints gray and just gray just to give some texture to the sky because it was too plain for me and what I'm doing here it's it's just a little bit of paints gray and water add some texture and some interest okay all right I think I'm gonna go back in with our, our dragon on the top I'm gonna give him a light purple so you know it's like while I'm doing this I'm going, okay where am I going with him on top. There we go. There we go. So I'm going to blot it a little bit. And basically violet across the top. Now again, I got two... See how fast that purple just... Damn! Sometimes just annoying. The way it can go a little bit too much, but then, like I said, blot it out if it's just going too much. And that's also the advantage of using good watercolor paper. Um, I always recommend, you know, use um, Arches, Canson, um, 
Arches is the best, actually, for me. Um, I've been playing with a lot of other things. I want to try some um, Eastern European watercolor paper. I haven't tried it. I've seen some of the, the paintings that come out of, like, Romania, what have you, and I really want to get some Eastern block watercolor paper because um, I just the, the watercolors they do look different, and I know it's the paper. It's got to be the paper. And um, I really need to get a hold of some of that. You can tell right now I'm doing a little bit of... Um, beyond so that I can get keep the the little bit of um, white sparkles that are kind of popping up get rid of those now let's see here for his underbelly I want to go alizarin crimson I want him purple on top we're gonna go to the burgundy underneath so I'm getting it gonna start light I don't want to go too dark got a little bit of blue there on his chest so I'm going to scumble it out I'm just rubbing that out so it kind of goes away and I'm basically mixing in a little bit of water a little bit of paint a little bit of water a little bit of paint taking this up and down in value because you don't going too heavy I got my wrong brush and I'm going back to a zero okay now in this area here there's some detailing that I missed. So I'm going to go back in with, I'm basically using clear water right now. I've made a mistake. I was talking about how you fix your mistakes. Okay, in this area here, I got too many overlap of colors. I wasn't being careful enough, right? So I'm just going back in with plain water. And you can tell it's a little bit muddled right now, but it's almost, it's taken back to a kind of a gray of the paper. And I'm going to let that dry a little bit and, and work on a few other little touches. Like, see, there's a little bit of green here that I left out, and there was it's sparkling there, and some stuff down here that I want to use. I'm going to also I'm going to throw a little bit of lizard and crimson into the shadows and the clouds right now. Well, I'm waiting for this to dry. And I'm going to throw a little purple in there too. And just a little bit of violet. So I can harmonize the entire painting. Um, I think I'll put a little bit of purple in the sky. Over here. And a little down here. And I'm going to give purple shadows too when we get done here. Actually, I'm probably going to give give him Prussian blue shadows would probably be good. Um, now I need to put just a little bit. And this is the tough part. Prussian blue can get Prussian blue can get pretty dark pretty fast too. Not the way the purple can. But right here is where I miss the sky, right between his legs. There, you see how all of a sudden those two legs stand out? Because I put the, uh, that little bit of blue in there. Okay, and let's put a little bit, let's really put some alizarin crimson on, on these feathers on his tail here. Yeah, 
that's nice. And the thing is, is that a lot of times when I'm painting, it's like, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do before I start or how I'm, I'm going to paint. It's a mystery to me as much as it is to you when I start. You know, it's like, is this going to be a purple dragon or a red dragon or a green dragon? And how am I going to mix the colors and where are they going to go? It's, and that's kind of the fun It is the, which direction are we going to go in? And as you build up, you know, it's, it's like, and you add on, it's the puzzle and the idea of where are you going to go with this painting. And you get to play God. You get to make the choices. You get to say, this is my creation. This is my, my painting. This is my idea. And I get to say what this dragon is going to look like in the end and who he is and what his origin story is. Like the darker alizarin touches. This is alizarin crimson. There's this nice, nice pinky red. It's not really red. It's not a pink, but you can make really nice pinks with it, and you can get these really nice, um, cool reds that have um, a nice, um, intense quality to them. I'm a real fan of alizarin crimson, and you can see how well it mixes with the purple make these really nice intense colors. Okay. The last thing I'm going to do with this boy is I'm going to give him some blue shadows. It's like in his right here. This is Prussian blue again. This is the same color blue that we have in the sky. But because I'm using it as a shadow, um, it comes out looking different than the sky itself. And it also harmonizes the dragon with the sky. As you can tell, I'm getting some greens in here. When it's it, the alizarin crimson, is all this is basically light alizarin crimson in here over burnt sienna. And because of the um, way the paint blends together, I'm getting some greens in there. I'm going to give him a blue eye. There we go. It's amazing what the little touches you do in the end can really piece to jump out. And again, I used um, um, D letter number four is the ink that I used as the basis for the drawing. And you can tell it's really holding up nicely against the watercolor. I don't have to really, I might go over the outline a little bit when we're done um, after the painting's fully dry, but I probably won't have to. And that's the thing with D letter. It it it's really nice. I, I personally really love the ink. The Japanese have come up with a really good ink. And you see, I'm I'm using the um, Prussian blue now for the shadows under his feet. There's our dragon, at least for this one. Um, again, my name is Lynn Hunter, L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R. I'm on Patreon. You can find me all over the web. Um, links are below. Um, if you want to help me out, go check out my store. I have books for sale. Um, and join my Patreon. Thank you for watching. Please like the channel, subscribe, and uh, again, I'm putting up uh, one um, how-to video a week. Thank you very much. Appreciate your coming by.